Hi, I'm Debbie from Simply Special Crafts. I've been promising you that I'm going to do a demonstration of the Go Press Foil and the Cut and Go Pro paper cutter and foiling machine. So we're going to take care of that today. If you enjoy this video and want to see more of them, please subscribe to our YouTube channel. If you like it, please hit that like button. If you would, please, it helps our ratings on YouTube. Let's get started. Okay, we're going to take a quick look at some of the projects that I've done using the GoPro Foil and some of our videos so that we can remember why this is a fun machine and what some of the things that we've done were. This was putting a frame on a little book page using the GoPro Foil. The, several of these are from our little book demo. But look what just adding that foil does for a little book page. It's amazing. Here's one I did with the um, fabulous florals, putting a frame on that. And that's also from the little book page. So you have gold and silver foil. Does it come in other colors? It comes in a myriad of colors. Gold and silver happen to come with the machine, so those are the ones that I've been using. But you have so many choices of colors. Okay, next. These are ones that I've done chipboard using the Go Press Foil. This chipboard came in a package like this, and I turned it into this beautiful foiled wreath. This wonderful little package that's hanging down from my bow, this frame around my Christmas tree. Then there's Foiling on cardstock, just foiling directly using Azure Art, actually using foiling plates. So both the seahorse and the frame are foiling plates. This is one of the cards we're going to demo today. Isn't he marvelous? I love that one. Then there's using your GoPress foil together with your die cutter to create some amazing and wonderful creations. And you can make your own um, insert pages using the GoPress file. So there's lots and lots of things you can do. They actually, the book says you can even do it on ribbon. I haven't tried that yet, but it does say you can use ribbon. So maybe we'll have to give that a shot. There you go. We're going to make three cards on camera today. We're going to make the card with a um, simple foiling design and die cutting. We're going to make this one when we're die cut or we're foiling on the chipboard and we're going to make this one when we're using two plates. Let's go ahead and get started. I'll pull my go press foil into view here. This is the basic machine. It comes with this Actually, I've got to turn this around so it's the right direction towards me. It comes, this is the um, protective plate over the top. You can see that mine is becoming well used. That's because I love it. It's fun. Um, when, the when you plug in the machine, it, blank it blinks red. And you hit that, hold it for a second, and when this blinking red stops and it turns green, then the plate is um, hot enough to use. So we'll get that going. In the meantime, let's go ahead and choose our plates that we're going to use. These are our cut and go plates. And I get questions all the time about how do I organize my cutting dies and that kind of thing. And to tell you the truth, guys, I have too many dies to do them this way, to display them this way. I have mine in books and bins, but, and I'll show you that system on a different day, but for my cutting or for my actual um, heating plates for my cut and foil, this works out great because I have everything displayed in a way that I can see it. This is a system by Zutter. These are magnetic sheets. You can pull the sheet out. I've written on them so because I want to keep track of all of my all of my plates and I want to make sure that after I've used them they find their way back to their home spaces. But you can flip through your plates, see they have little index tabs at the top so that you can see them. 
Um, they sell additional plates. I think the, the box itself comes with one set of plates and then you can get more. And it has this wonderful stand-up system in it. When I'm done using it, I simply flip this up. I can lay all of my stuff down. I can put a lid on it so it'll stay securely. And when I'm ready to use it again, I'm just going to reverse the process and stand it all back up. So I thought you might enjoy actually seeing that. Now the front and back magnetic? Whoops, excuse me? Or is the back magnetic too, or just the one side? I think it's just the one side. We'll test that and find out. I don't know. It's a good question. It appears that the back is magnetic. Uh, not very magnetic, though. <laughs> it fell off, so I'm going to say no. But they hold pretty well from one direction. So, anyway, that's how I'm storing my, my cutting plates. So I'm going to want to use this, uh, this one. I'm going to use the Thorny Branches by Anna Griffin to start with. I see that my machine is ready, so I'm going to put my plate in and let it start getting hot. Now, they've got all these devices to keep you from getting burned, and these do, in fact, get hot. It's not terribly, terribly hot, so I, on one hand, I don't want to tell you not to use the protective devices that they've given you. I mean, you always should do that for your own protection. But I can tell you that I haven't been burned on it, so that's good news. I wouldn't put a kid on using this by themselves, like certainly. A cup of coffee hot? Yeah, like a right out of the pot cup of coffee. That's a really good illustration, honey. Okay, so my machine is green. That's heating. I'm going to let that dye heat in there. I'm calling it a dye, but it's actually a plate. I'm going to let that plate heat in there for a minute or so. In the meantime, I'm going to cut myself a piece of foil that is roughly the size of that plate. These foil come in really nice long rolls. It's amazing how much you get in a roll. And the sheets are as wide as the GoPress foil is, so that's nice. Okay, when my plate has had a chance to get hot, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to put my foil on. I'm going to take a piece of cardstock. And you'll notice I put my foil face down. The reason for that is when it adheres to my cardstock, I want the shiny part to be on the cardstock. I'm going to put my cardstock on top. And then I have found, by reading the directions, <laughs> an amazing thing to do, that this works better if you shim it. So I'm going to put a shim in there, and I'm just going to close that up for a second. Organize my workspace just a tad here, and I'm going to pull over my Cut and Go Pro. Now, one of your questions will be, do I have to have that machine? No, I will tell you this machine is really, really nice because they're made to go together. But you can use other kinds of other kinds of machines to roll this through. And now I've just taken that, slid it off of my base. I'm running it through my machine. And I didn't have to do anything other than put that one cardstock shim in there to have my sandwich be just right. I'm going to set it on my hot mat here, open it up, that's just my shim showing there. I'll pull off my cardstock, and this is what we should see. And I peel back my foil. Oh, that's not pretty. We have a gorgeous foiled image. Isn't that fun? Just that easy, guys. Just that quick and just that easy. Now, here's another question. Can I use all the rest of those bits of foil? Yes. If you have little sentiments and things, you can use these extra little scraps. So 
save those. I mean, that's certainly big enough to put a cinnamon on something. So cut those little scraps off and use those before you toss them. The paper, or the foiling material, see, this is hot, but it's not terribly hot. It's not burning me to pick that up, although I did. I have to say, I did work in a, in a kitchen once, and after that, I have tough fingers. So we have this neat little tool. It's a magnetic tool that actually comes with the machine that allows you to pick those up. So again, I'm not advocating you burn yourself. You need to use all reasonable precautions, but it's not something that I find to be inherently dangerous. And again, I wouldn't put a kid on it by themselves. So, so I'm resetting my temperature since I've had this off. I'm letting it flash red again. As soon as that turns green, <coughs> we'll make another image for our, for our next card. This time, I want to do this frame, my classic frame. Now, I have to make sure that if I'm going to use it, they actually recommend using one plate at a time, but I'm having great success using a couple of these plates as long as one fits cleanly inside the other. I could put a thank you. Are you seeing that from here? Mm -hmm. I could put a greeting inside of there. But I wouldn't want to put anything, I think this one might be too big, but we'll try it. I've got this gorgeous reindeer. Brittany's dye ink to have me use this reindeer. Yeah, see the reindeer's a little bit too big. Now if I were to try this, I would damage my plate and I would damage my machine because you can't have one laying over the top of the other and roll it through a die cutting machine. That's going to be bad news. So. But I can use it and have used it successfully with a die that fits cleanly inside of my frame. So I'm going to do one using the seahorse. So let's do this one. My machine is green again. I'm going to put my frame down. I like to work somewhat towards the top of the machine just because I know where that puts it on my paper then. Because that's one of the bad parts about not being able to see through the card. We're kind of working upside down is that you can't see where you are. So I'm going to just let that plate, those plates heat for a minute. You want silver this time instead of gold? Okay. Bryce wants silver, Bryce gets silver. <laughs> you have to let them have these little victories now and again, don't we? <laughs> okay. Yeah, so we're letting that heat. They say just a minute or two once it has flashed. You can see that it's green again. So I think that means that we should be set and ready to go. Let's open that plate up. We're putting our foil face down. Again, we want the shiny side towards the cardstock we're trying to work on. I have a clean piece of card here. I'm going to put that right over the top of my foil. And I'm going to put my shim in. I'm going to close that up. I don't have to wait. Once that machine is hot and it has heated through that plate, I can just pull this right over to my machine, to my die cutting machine, roll this through. Now, if it gives you any resistance at all, especially if you're using two plates, stop. Uh, check it. Make sure you're not you're not um, one plate on top of the other. Because again, if you do that, you're going to ruin your plates and potentially your die cutting machine. So, if it gives you any resistance at all, stop and back up. Put it on my hot mat. Open the machine. Take out my shim. Take out my cardstock. 
Okay, I got just a little cattywampus, but I can fix that with my with my die cutter now. Up here at the top, it didn't cook quite as much as I would like, but I think that's still okay. I'm going to show you what my trick for dealing with that. For one thing, in, in this foiling, you're going to get a little bit of that, so don't be terribly upset with yourself. In fact, if you see, some of the ones that I showed you actually had little tiny bits that I didn't capture. And I came up with a way to deal with that that I like just fine. I'm going to take these plates out. And set them on my hot mat. Do you need to let them cool before you put them back on your magnetic sheets? Well, maybe. I mean, it, it, it wouldn't hurt to let them cool a bit before you put them away. Because I don't know what kind of finish those. I, I don't even know if I told you that that's from Zetter. Did I say it's from Zetter? Okay, yeah. good. Yeah, I don't know what kind of finish those Zetter products have, so... It wouldn't hurt to use an abundance of caution and just let those cool a little. It won't take but just a minute for them to cool. Now you notice when I put my when I put my um, plate back onto the machine, it's flashing red again. That's because it's heating. The next thing we're going to do, I'm going to just get all the foiling done at one time, and then we'll move to the die cutting here. The next thing we're going to do is do a couple pieces of chipboard. Definitely. Now, when you're pushing this chipboard out, be really careful because these pieces are very delicate. They're calling this chipboard, but I actually believe that these, they sure look to me like a veneer. Don't they look, look like a veneer to you, Bryce? Yeah. These are from the Netherlands, so sometimes they use different terms for things than we do. If I'm going to do one, I might as well do a few different pieces here, so. I'm just popping them out. You can see how easily that broke, though. And I think that's because there's wood grain there. This is the brand. I don't even know how to pronounce that. F-I-L-I-G-R-A-N-K-I. Your guess is as good as mine, folks, but that's the brand we're using. Let's use this little silver snowflake, too. That's beautiful. The snowflake has kind of a fun feature to it, too. I discovered last time when I was doing this. So we're using great care taking it out. I think I'm going to break the frame on purpose on this one to just get it out in one piece. But the thing I learned about this when I was doing this last time is this one. You can actually make two snowflakes out of this one. This, these little laser cut pieces are so finely cut. It's amazing. This little snowflake will... I told you I could do that. I did it last time. It will pop right out of the middle there, giving me two snowflakes to foil. Looks like a job for a pokey tool. I happen to have one of those. I'm just hanging on a little bit there. And I don't want to pressure it too much because I want to keep... There we go. Now look at that. I got this little snowflake and this little snowflake. Okay. Let's go for it. This time, they tell us that we're going to put the foil, I think I want gold again. We're going to put the foil right on the plate. Shiny side down. My reindeer, my snowflake. You can see we're kind of recapturing some of the pieces from our other. Why not? We like to be thrifty with our craft supplies. 
That's my package. And I should be able to get those last two on here. I'm going to close that up. And I'm going to let those heat for a little while. I'm going to let those sun chipboard wooden pieces get nice and warm. As soon as that red light goes out again, we'll pop that right back through our die cutting machine. And while that's happening, remember this piece here, this outer frame, is what I used to make this window for this card, just in case you're interested. Now, that's not going to fit because it's just a little too wide. So what I did was I clipped it along here. I actually cut through and then actually maybe here, cut through here, somewhere that it didn't have the star there that I was messing with. So I had a nice clean cut line. I cut along there, I foiled it in two pieces and then I put it back together. So just so you know, in case you wanna try that. Okay, we're green again. So let's go from here over to our Cut and Go Pro. Roll this through. I didn't put my shim in. I maybe should have. I'm going to check that. That seems like that's a little too loose. It's just... Yeah, I think I want to do that again with a shim. Open this up. Take these and set them back on my plate. I'm not going to have to wait a long time because they did, in fact, already heat once, but I'll let them heat just a little again. Then we'll try that again because I think that would work better if it had. In fact, it seems so loose, I'm actually putting an extra piece of shim in. Green again, popping that out, putting it through my machine. Yeah, this feels a little more normal now. Still a little loose. And if you find that it's not foiling entirely the way you like it, like on our on our um, seahorse, just give it another piece of shim. It's okay. You can adjust your shim material because that's what's causing it. If you're not getting a full Oil. You see that? Look at that. Peeled yeah. right off and it's beautiful. Next. Our star. Our delicate little snowflake. All those little contours and we got every little bit of it. And finally, our reindeer. Now he actually, the foiling, it looks great. It just has kind of a slightly distressed look to it. He's fine. But if I wanted that to be more, I could run him through again with an extra shim. And this snowflake looks beautiful. So that's how you use that. We've done three different materials, or three different styles. We're going, we've done just the plate, two plates, working on chipboard. Now let's go ahead and put together some quick cards using those samples. Okay, we're going to start by trimming down our foiled image. It just a little crooked in the machine, so I'm going to have to cut it crooked slightly on purpose here. I'm just lining it up with my cutter pillar right along the line. 
And I can use that line as a straight edge for my other cuts then. And I'll still end up with a square. So there's our embossed or our foiled image. And we actually, we could go ahead and use it exactly like this, but I think I'm going to go ahead and trim it down a little bit more. So I'm going to take about uh, roughly a quarter of an inch off all sides. You might be thinking, well, that's going to look weird, isn't it? Nope, it's not. Because what I'm going to do then is put a piece of mirror board behind it and it will look like it was foiled exactly that way. Now, look how much cleaner our edges look just taking that little bit of roughness up off the top. So let's put a piece of mirror board behind here. And we've got a lot of questions on what kind of cutter you're using. This is my cutter pillar crop. And this is... I actually have one that's slightly larger than this. When I'm on video and I'm trying to get everything in view where you can see it, I like to use this one. My favorite one is my Caterpillar desktop. But my Caterpillar crop is a slightly smaller machine. It takes up less room in my video filming area. But um, this is just one of the finest paper cutters out there. You can spend hundreds of dollars on a paper trimmer. There are many, many that are very, very expensive. Oh, and there's you. also ones that are super inexpensive. With paper trimmers, you tend to get what you pay for. Although we do have them in all price ranges in the store. And the ones that I have are, diff are ones that I recommend for the price range. This one right here retails for $89. The desktop version that's my favorite retails for $139. Um, then in some of our videos you'll see me using my little EK Success. That one retails I believe for $39. So they're all over the board. Now, what are the advantages of this one over that $39 paper cutter? Well, for one thing, this has all kinds of extra wonderful features. It's lighted. So if I'm having trouble, um, I have one of my friends that comes over and, and crafts with me a lot that has some vision challenges. And for her, being able to light that edge when she's working is just miraculous. Um, I don't, that's not a feature that I usually care that much about, but it is lighted. The other thing is that, and probably the best part of this one to me, there's two things. One, the measure is absolutely accurate on this one. The straight edge at the top is perfection. And this has a self-sharpening blade that never, ever has to be replaced. Every time I cut it, it's sharpening itself against this metal piece here. So all I'm doing is pushing against that piece of metal and it's sharpening the blade with every single cut I make. And you don't have to replace channel mats. There is no channel mat in this one. So once you buy the machine, other than potentially replacing the battery for the lights, you never have to put money in it again. And they last forever. It was, you know, reasonable care. They last forever. So that's my paper cutter and why I love it. <laughs> the bigger one, I only love that more because it is bigger. It'll take, this will take 12 by 12 paper too, but it actually has a solid table for 12 by 12 paper. And it's got a storage bin underneath where I store all of my little scraps of Mary board that I cut off because I don't like to throw away Mary. You can do, you know, you can use it to cut little sentiments with your die cutter. You can take a little strip of Mary and you can run it through an embossing folder and get a 
wonderful little ribbon by running it through an embossing folder. You can cut out little mats and things out of your scraps. So I like to keep all those scraps of mirror board and it gives me a place to store all of those right in the paper cutter. So when I'm going to cut something small, I know to look there first. Okay, I just mounted this on a piece of mirror board and see what I mean about the finished edge. It just kind of looks like it belongs now by putting that silver foiled image on a piece of silver mirror board even though I chopped it down. It's perfect again. It looks great. Okay, one of the things I like with this one is I thought it was really fun to add some sparkle to the actual seahorse. So I'm going to put a few of these little jewel dazzles. Oops. Right onto my seahorse. I like the little tiny ones for this because he just has little little dots on him. And it just makes him glimmer in a fun way. I could, if I wanted to, add some more embellishments to the outside of the seahorse. I might do it, I don't know. Just a few more. Do you see how I'm kind of, uh, sometimes people say, I don't see how you get those little tiny things on there. This is exactly how I get those little tiny things on there. I move them on to my tweezers or pokey tool or some kind of a fine edge and then I press them down that way. But I actually roll them off onto my finger first. Maybe some larger bubbles around the outside. Yeah, we can do that. Bryce is suggesting we put a couple of air bubbles up around him, and we absolutely can do that. I just wanted to add some scales to my... This kind of ends up looking like scales on my seahorse by adding some dimension to him. And then we could take some of these and we can make some bubbles, sure. Can you swim along? You want to have some wonderful bubbles? Oh, air bubbles. <laughs> oh, he's cute. Okay, oh, I you want to put him on for a background. I want to put him on blue. Blue? Okay, blue it is. Ooh, that's pretty. Okay. I'm going to put him on blue. And then I want. I'm going to make this have a couple of mats just because I'm in that kind of creative mindset right now. I'm going to use a piece of black cardstock behind that. And I'm going to use a piece of rainbow mirror between the black and the blue. Which is going to, let's see, I got a little snag in my mirror, but it's not going to show because it's going to be underneath, so I'm using it anyway. You would too, I know you would. Okay. And look what I'm going to get on my car. That's going to look good. Okay. I will also want to allow enough room here. I want my blue frame to be about that size, I think, and I want to allow enough room here to put my greeting on. I've chosen for my greeting this um, 
happy birthday and from the reprint stickers. It's also done in holographic. I'll peel this back a little bit so I can see what I'm lifting. If I wanted to make an easy job of this, doing this with um, transfer tape would be a good idea. In fact, I think I might just do that if my transfer tape is still over here. Because these holographic stickers can be just a little bit more delicate. See how they, they um, backing tore? As I was pulling that off, they can be just a little bit more delicate than the than the regular vinyl ones. So, oh, thank you, Grace. I have a good honey. I haven't said that on camera recently, but I really do. He's a good sport coming out here filming our videos, so we can do this and coming home from work and pulling orders and he's one of the good ones I tell you it's one thing if I'm up all night working on the business but he works another job then he comes home and works on the business on his days off and on his evenings too so I'm grateful for that it's only possible because he does that Okay, so I weeded that out. I took out all the things that I... All the centers of my letters. If you watched our last video, you saw this process. If not... It will be something that you can see here. I'm taking this piece of transfer tape I pre-cut. I used it last time on the video. I'm going to try and line this up pretty straight so that my, I don't have to do any straightening. My letters and my spacing will already be straight. And I'm going to peel this off. You saw how I, you may have seen how I started to lift it from one side and it was sticking, so I lifted it from the other and it came right up. Okay, now I'm going to want this to be right about here. I think it's straight. Looks good, but I'm going to move this just a tiny bit. Oops, now I messed it up. But you can see, because I had not put it down firmly yet, I was able to just lift and move that tape. That usually happens. It's not a guarantee, but it usually happens that way. Okay. This time I am going to press it down. I'm actually going to do my trimming after I put my sentiment down because then I see how much room I want and we talked about this when we talked about using transfer tape it should theoretically come up easy now it depends in, in part on the paper you're putting it on if I was going onto a glossy service it almost certainly would come up easy. Or I'm going on a cardstock where it's a little bit more porous, it can give me a little bit more of a hard time. But you saw what I did. I just rubbed it down again, and then I was prepared to hold the pieces down with my with my pokey tool. I see that you can see that I'm pulling at a sharp angle back. That helps it release too, as opposed to now. Here's something we have to watch for though. See this because this is porous. Remember when I gave you the guidance and said don't do this on um, little book pages? This cardstock is going to give me just a little bit of a hard time too. And the cardstock is lifting just a little bit with the transfer tape. I'm going to try coming in from the other side and see if I can release that little snag in my paper 
without getting too much of a disruption. Let's see, I lost that little bit of cardstock, but because I noticed it and then I corrected for it quickly, it's not anything you're going to see. But I'm glad it did that because now you know that it can on cardstock and yet we were able to compensate for it. Okay, so I'm going to tape this seahorse down here right over my happy birthday and I'm going to trim my other two edges. Now you guys can oops, now you guys can see why I don't do all of the cards that I do in my kind of show and tell videos on camera because can you imagine how long it would take to do this with 60 cards or it just would not be practical to try and do that so but I thought three was doable give myself a little extra room there to start with and then I'll see how it looks on my card and I'll come back in at it once I can tell that I'm gonna go to four and a quarter okay that's looking pretty good that might just be just a fraction wider on this side. Let's take just a little hair off. Now again, you gotta have a good paper cutter to do that. Look at that little sliver of paper. That's why I love my machine. Okay, so I want to make sure that none of these snags in my cardstock show on my finished work here. I'm going to, next thing I'm going to do is cover my card with my black card stuff. There it is. I knew I had a 5x7 here somewhere. Remember when we're covering our card and we're folding, we fold down on the score line. Quickly, when we're covering a card, we're adding our easy tear tape. We're overlapping it just slightly, ever so slightly, because we want to get that tape to go right to the edge of our card. Push that tape down, lift that tape up. If it gives me any kind of a hard time at all while I'm lifting that, I would tear it from the center and go back both directions. most important thing is to make sure you get that card stuck right to the edge of your card. Overlap it if necessary. You can always trim off the excess. See I did overlap just a little but I didn't end up with any uncovered areas this time. And then I used my card itself as my cutting line. Just go around it with my long scissors. When people are nervous about cutting with scissors, they think they can't do it, but when you're bending your scissors right up against the side of your card, it's pretty easy. There we go. We've got our covered card. Now we want to compare this. Look at that. That's pretty good for eyeballing this whole thing. Oh, you're into marriage. I am. Oh. I just wanted to compare it before I before I put it down to see how much room I had for the mirror board. And I'm just going to put a very thin line of Mary. But it's, what it's going to do is it's going to capture those holographics and just really make that all come together by putting mirror board behind here. Would I have to? No. Do I want to? Yep. <laughs> I do want to. 
Okay, I have a little itty bitty snag in my cardstock right there, so I'm going to cut this just a little bit extra so I can take that little corner bump off. I've said before, all the any products that come in damaged, I just bring up to the shop and I use them here. So this was a pack of Mary that came in with a little bit of damage on it, so I won't send it to you. I bring it out here and use it. And I'm actually not measuring this to measure it. You can if you want to. I want these to be about an eighth of an inch. Experience will tell you after a while what that looks like. I'm sure most of you eyeball it too. Look at that. Oh, pretty, pretty, pretty. And we will attach that here. And I see something else that's kind of bugging me just a tad. Now that I have covered my card, I have just the slightest bit of white from the inside showing. I don't like that. So I'm going to... I would not try that with scissors, and I wouldn't try that with anything but a good paper cutter. But I'm trimming that off, and now I don't have that extra little tiny bit of white. I didn't want it to get any narrower because I like it just the way we have it here, but I didn't want that distracting, so I took it off. This would be a good job for those tape tails if you're not comfortable and confident putting this down and having it be absolutely centered. Putting, leaving those tape tails out is a good way to go. There's card number one from this video. Gorgeous! I love it! Okay, this time we're going to tie or make a variation of this card. And start the covering the card gold card stuck and folding down on the score line. Putting on my Mary. My first my finger lift tape to put on my Mary. I'm going to use that that um, tails technique to make sure that we get our Mary on nice and straight. Allow myself a bit of room on this edge to see that it's lining up right. This one I really don't have to do that because I'm cutting. I have extra wide paper, so I am going to line that up right along that card. Excuse me if I get my forehead in your picture. Good. I'm just saying sometimes it's just a little bit awkward working on camera. I think I make just a few more mistakes because I'm reaching out so that you can see what I'm doing instead of being right over it like I normally would be. That's not to say I don't make mistakes anyway. I do. It's just really kind of an excuse for mistakes, but it's the best one I've got, so I'm going with it. <laughs> Some of my very best work came as a result of mistakes, though, so I can't complain too much about mistakes. Okay, we got that ready to go. I want to use this image full size, and I put just a tiny bit of Mary behind that last time, so I'm going to do that again. My tape on the back of this and mat it with Mary. And I want just a tiny edge, just enough. I've got that a little bit crooked, but I'll fix it with the scissors. 
I just want a tiny edge. This would be a good paper cutter job too, but let's fight with the scissors. What's that other Mary brand that you just got in? Nouveau, which is also wonderful mirror board. It's just as high quality as the Hunky Dory one. It sells for $3.49 for a five sheet pack, which is awesome. And I'm only using this instead of that because I already had this in my shop and was going to use up what I've got. Now, that's not to say that I won't still use the Hunky Dory brand, too. I will. But I'll use whatever I want to use that's good for the job at hand, you know. So, I'm going to back this present with a piece of Mary. You know, if I had my little um, Xyron sticker maker, that would be an excellent job for that. But I don't, so I'm going to use the I need you to grab if you would, huh? Okay, so I'm just going to use my little fine tip glue bottle. Mary and glue don't always like each other very much because while glue dries clear, it still shows on mirror board because of the reflective finish of the Mary. So go super light with your glue bottle when you're gluing on Mary, just enough to hold your element in place. Bryce asked me while we were off camera, do you have Xyron sticker makers? And I said, sometimes we do. I don't know if we have any in stock right now. I wasn't really trying to sell that product, but just saying that because it only puts the adhesive where you want it, it would be an excellent tool for doing this fine work where you're putting something. I want you to notice something. I'm not, I'm just putting that mirror board right where it has to be to cover what I want to cover. Uh, no more than I, no more than I have to. And what do I do with my sharp scissors? Okay. Use my little detail scissors to just cut in and around here. Gonna whack it out of the cardstock to begin with. I'll go in and cut my finer lines in. It doesn't have to be perfect, it just has to not show from the front. So a little rough cutting is fine. There we go. There's our little package. We decided to back it in black so that our package would show a little bit more. It would be a very elegant gift. Gold and black, wouldn't it? Okay, next up, we're going to compare this to this. I know I'm going to take that green card stuck down a little bit because I want my mirror board to show. Looks like we're going to cut about a quarter of an inch off of that. So, slide these back out of the way. Put my paper cutter back. And I'm going to cut this down to four and a quarter. Sorry, four and three quarters. By six and three quarters. Good. Holding this up again. Yeah, this is going to look just right. So, this cardstock, in case you're wondering, came out of this. Yeah, it came out of this one. Came out of this um, Paper Accents cardstock sprites. These are really nice because they're inexpensive, five by seven pieces. If I wasn't putting the Mary on, I could just glue this directly to my card base. 
So they're nice, they're convenient. It's good quality cardstock, and they're relatively inexpensive. All things I like. Okay, I'm going to put this on here. Then we're going to tie our bow and put it on because we want to wrap our tails or our bow around the back here. Before, actually, I just did it on here, didn't I? Mm -hmm. oh, I kind of messed that up, but that's okay. Let's see. I'm going to tie my, or open this up. When I say I messed up, I only put messed up by putting the tape on early. That's not really a great shakes. I'm just creating a couple little tape flags here, so my it'll actually be nice to have my ribbon be able to stick in the adhesive when it comes around the back, but I want to tie my bow next. Pre-cut a piece of our satin ribbon. I like this green with this project. It's a chewed up looking thing. Like that. Okay, we're going to tie a three loop satin bow. Now, I will tell you that satin is great. It is a little bit more challenging with this project simply because it's a little bit slicker. My recommendation to you with satin is don't tie your satin bow. <laughs> I'm going to take that off, please. Like I said, it'll stick to my adhesive. Don't tie your satin bow until you're ready to use it. This is not one you want to pre-tie and let sit around because it will, it'll kind of go wanky on you. But if you, if you tie it and then use it immediately, the adhesives you use to put it to the card will help to hold it in shape. So I put my tail through. I came to number four. I wrapped around the back. I came through number four again. Now I'm going to number five coming around the back again, coming between five and six. Now I'm going to go back to four, between four and five, four and five. I'm going to go down through the hole. Don't worry if it kind of looks stacked up up there, it's going to. I am being careful to keep the shiny side of my ribbon out. So when I pull it through, I want to make sure that the side that I'm coming up through the ones with What's showing to the outside is the shiny part. And I just realized that I didn't tie. Well, it's probably going to be fine. I should have left more room at the end. Okay, I'm going to do that super quick again. I needed to leave more room on my tail to tie it in the back. So I'm just going back and Okay, so I got my fours, I got my fives, five to six, between five and six, four to five, between four and five, come down through the middle, really, I really do want to go through there, and shiny side out, I'm going to come back through my ones, now I'm going to tie it off and I'll have longer tails. And when I tie it, because I'm using single face satin ribbon, I really want my shiny sides to be down as I tie it. So turn my ribbon as necessary to get the shiny side down. See what I mean? I kind of turned those ribbons a little bit so that the shiny side is facing down, which is going to be the top of my bow. I'm going to pull it pretty good. And then I'm going to peel that off. And I'm going to spread those loops out. And I have a perfectly beautiful three loop bow. Look at that. Isn't that gorgeous? Amazing! Okay, now you'll see that I kind of let my bow go at an angle. I want to do that again, 
I'm just going to kind of let it go where it wants to go as I put it on here. So I am going to actually put a little bit of, of um, tear tape. Can you still see me? Uh -huh. I'll put a little bit of tear tape here, down my ribbon. A little bit of tear tape. That's my shiny side. I want to be working on the back. A little bit of tear tape here, just to help me position that bow and make it go where I want it to go. It sticks just fine to the ribbon. And now, I'm going to I decided I wanted this side up. Why? I don't know. I just like the angle of the bow better. Let me put it through here. I'm going to fix my loops again when I'm, when I'm done here. And bring this around, smooth it, bring this around, clip it off. I need to spread my bow out just a little bit again. Looks like this one's going to be fairly straight. That's fine. I don't mind it as straight. And I'm going to put my little package down here as if it's suspended from that bow. This way. I got it at kind of an angle. I like that better. Okay. And we're going to put this on here. Get it where you want it. Pull those pieces of tape. We're gonna glue on our package. If I wanted to let this dangle, I could put a little piece of ribbon on it and let it dangle in there. I just want to make it look like it's dangling now. And I'm going to put this on here. That's two cards down. Again, you can see why we don't do 60 cards on camera. I try and do one now and again, and you guys are really liking and appreciating the more detail so I'll do more of my work on camera so you can see but we probably will never do all of our work on camera because that's not good. I should this would have been a good job for the tear tape tags, huh? Awesome. That's gonna be fine. I didn't tear it or anything. I just didn't like the way it looked. There we go. That's much better. Voila! Card number two. Okay, next up we're going to make this one. We're going to make this one on a European A6, roughly 4x6 card for this one. I'm using decorative dies by Tattered Lace. Now, I wanted to tell you that there are, we have lots of different nested sets in the store, so I'm not sure whether or not we have these, but if we don't have these, we'll have something that's equally wonderful, and I'll link you to a couple things in the newsletter. Of course, if you're not a newsletter subscriber, sign up for a newsletter down in the comments section below, and we'll send you links with all the supplies for this in our other videos. So, anyway, I'm using these. I'm using my A6 card. I'm using some red cardstock 
and I'm using our foiled image that we made and some gold mary. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-cut some of my um, layers here. Okay, while we were off camera, I went ahead, I covered my card with my mirror board. I cut my mat down slightly smaller. You've seen examples of that a couple times here, so I didn't think you really want to spend time doing that. I also cut my first layer of my mirror board. Now I selected this mat simply by choosing one size larger than the one that I'm using to cut my, my image. Now, I'm not going to use this entire thing. I can kind of pick what part of the image I want to use. I think last time I used this. This time, I think we'll go and we'll use maybe this part here. Now I will center our, we'll put our butterfly kind of right in the middle because I want that to stay where I've got it while I die cut it. I'm going to go ahead and put just a little bit of purple tape here. Now, with the um, Cut and Go Pro, it wants to cut face up. That's funny because some die cutters want one, some die cutters want the other one. Um, you can see that I have very, very well used cutting plates. I use this machine a lot because it's small, it's compact, it's easy to fit on my work table. 95% of all the dies I cut will fit through this machine. I like the action of this machine. These cutting plates are very thin and they warp over time. They all do. One thing you can do to help stop that is rotate your plate back and forth. Go end over end, back and forth. It's kind of like the concept of turning your mattress or rotating your tires to keep the wear even. It's the same thing. We want to keep the wear on our plate even. So we'll flip it over back and forth and try and use it at different angles so that it wears evenly. But die cutting plates will cutting plates will always have to be replaced if you use your machine at all you're going to have to replace your cutting plates sometimes but look how nice the action is on this machine it's just really simple there's no real struggle at all that cracking sound that's normal it's just the sound of the die cutting so don't think you're ruining anything it should if you have the right pressure setting it should cut cleanly and it should cut fairly and turn fairly easily. So, what kind of purple tape is that? That's our hunky dory, the easy or low tack tape. Okay, so we're tossing this part, unless you can think of something wonderful you want to do with that window. And I know there's some of you out there creative enough to do that. Okay. Oh, one thing I wanted to say is we're doing a special on these machines over Thanksgiving weekend. And we are including an extra set of cutting plates with your machine when you purchase a machine over our holiday weekend sale. So that'll be fun. Again, everybody needs to replace their plates eventually. We do have a really nice um, supply of those plates in. So if you get this machine from us, I always recommend getting another set or two of plates. Although plates can be expensive, we've got a really good price on our plates. Recommended retail is like $20, and we're selling ours for $10. So it's actually $22 suggested retail for the plates. So with the purchase of a machine... You can get a, you can get extra ones for ten dollars. I didn't totally like the way that went on there, but it didn't look like it was going to come off easily, so I'm going to go with it just like it is. Okay, so I've put my easy tear tape on the back. I've put it on my other border. Now we need to cut ourselves a butterfly, and I couldn't locate the one that I used last time, so I'm just going to go with a different butterfly because we're adaptable sorts. Bryce is rolling his eyes at me. I'm not known for being particularly adaptable. <laughs> I'm totally adaptable as long as everything always goes my way. <laughs> paper head there. It's just ever so slightly too narrow to do what I want to do. 
But this is going to work. Love using those scraps when I can. Okay. So I cut it that way. We'll flip it over and cut it this way this time. Remember, this machine wants you to cut upward. Quick and easy pass through our machine. Beautiful. My low tack tape held my die in place nicely. These dies happen to be from Memory Box, I believe, or Poppy Stamps. They're the same company, different brands. This is a Poppy Stamp die. Made in the U.S. of hardened steel. Really, really, really good dies from this company. We're also doing a holiday special on, uh, yeah, Black Friday special on Memory Box. I know, you're probably thinking, what is she doing? It's a terrible thing to do to a die. Hardened steel. I'm not going to hurt it doing that. I look at this pretty little butterfly that we just got here. I'm not sure he's going to show up a great deal. That's the only thing. I could back him in something, but... And I'll put two of them, that one and the little one. For the sake of illustration, I don't know that I will back it tonight because I've held these people long enough, but nah, I don't care for that. I was going to do two little butterflies on there, that's why I cut two, but... Oh, if I leave him off of the vines, though, I think I like that. As long as he's... As long as he's um, off of the vines, he shows up okay. Let's do that. But I could put another piece of paper behind there and just trim out around that butterfly. One thing you'll notice I always do with my butterflies is I always try to perk their wings up a little bit. And my glue bottle. Oops, there we go. My glue bottle's been sitting open. It's going to be a little contrary. But I do love these tiny needle tip glue bottles. If you don't have one yet, get yourself one. They're two bucks. And they are just truly, truly wonderful. Yeah, I'll put two little butterflies on there this time. I go off camera ever so quickly to grab a sentiment sticker. We found our stickers. I'm using the Thinking of You off of this reprint from Hunky, from Hot Off the Press. We'll have that linked in the newsletter. I have my transfer tape. Now, given what happened last time with it trying to pull at the card, I'm going to take, I'm going to do one extra step here before I put this on. I am going to, you can do this with um, purple low tack tape too if you're working with really delicate material. As soon as I can feel it, there it is. I'm going to either stick it on my hand, stick it on my skin, and lift it. I'm taking some of the tackiness off, guys. Or I could do the same thing by sticking it on my clothes. If it grosses you too much out, stick it on your hand. I'm lining it up. I'm going to use it just like normal. Now, I might have to work just a tad harder at lifting it off of the paper because I took some of the stickiness off, although it's actually going to work fine. I want it to take my little dot off my eye, too. There it goes. Yeah, it's still going to work just fine lifting it up. But if you find that the purple sticky tape you know, the low-tack tape is still too tacky for your job. That will work to do that there, too. Putting my thinking of you down. I just don't want the tape to be so tacky that it's tearing my paper this time. So we learned our lesson on cardstock. And I think we should be fine this time, theoretically. Now, see, I tried to lift just a little bit there, but by angling it at a sharp angle, 
to pull it back. Look how easily that moved. Well, I did take the dot. I thought it had left the dot because I have a little dot there. It must have been a dot I had on my hand. There we go. It's gorgeous! This is our third card. Well, thanks for joining us today. We've done a lot of work here in a short period of time. We have looked at the cut and, or the, uh, the GoPro foil. We've looked at the Cut and Go Pro. We've taken a look at the Cutter B paper cutter. We have taken a look at a wide variety of things that we can do using our foiling machine. We've made some little things. We have foiled some different pieces. We've made three cards on camera. I'd say we've accomplished quite a lot. If you enjoy this video, be sure you like us. We'd sure appreciate it. And we'll see this Debbie from Simply Special Crafts. We'll see you next time.